Andy Gregory and I'm excited to be at Regat in Penrith. I'm just about to cook with Peter Sidwell at his cooking school. I'll meet you in there. Hi, it's Andy Gregory. I'm at Peter Sidwell's cookery school in Regat, Penrith. Chicken Kiev time now, yeah. but it's different to the kind of things you buy from the, the freezer in the supermarket, this, isn't it? It certainly is. It's yeah. got chicken in it, which is quite, <laughs> which is quite good. Yeah. No, this is, um, I think if you're going to take on the pound for pound challenge, you need to find some dishes that kind of give you that sense of gratification and satisfaction. And for me, I love a Kiev, you know, that all that garlic butter kind of oozing out, it's amazing, but really bad for you, let's be honest. But, and if you're going to try this pound for pound, which I am definitely going to give it a whirl, uh, I want to create dishes that give that gratification and I think a Kiev will do that. So it's a little bit different, yep. all the elements of Kiev, but we've reworked it a little bit so that it's a bit healthier, a bit lighter, but in still packed full of flavour, which right. is really important. So the first thing I want to do is get these tomatoes here. So this is, these are to serve with the Kiev, yeah? So this is a bit like going to be our sauce, but also a vegetable as well at the same time. So tomatoes just in half. Okay, and we'll pop them on this tray here. Okay, and we'll get a couple more on there as well. What we don't want to do is we're going to roast these in the oven. And the reason why we've cut them this way is that as they get hotter, the water will evaporate out. And this time of year, tomatoes are not great in flavour, so this makes the best of them. Yeah. So the more water you remove, the more flavour you get. So we'll cut them like that. And then if you could get me some little bits of thyme here, Thyme and tomatoes go incredibly well together. Okay, I just pick the thyme off and just put a few leaves on each one. Not like, no, don't put loads on, just a few. It'd be lovely. Okay, and while you're doing that, I'm going to season them up a little bit. So, a little bit of pepper on each one. For some reason, they've not come off the stalk for me. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure. Tiny bit of salt, not, not much. I think uh, that's really a job for you, that is one. It, is it a little bit too tricky for me? Okay, so we just, yeah, Okay. just give them a rub and you get the leaves off, okay? Yeah. It's just to give that little bit of flavour, yeah. that's all. And you were saying you do courses here at the, the cookery school yeah. to learn how to do specifically this type of food, these type of dishes. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're running some courses as well because I think, I mean I want it to be a great cookery course first but it happens to be a bit lighter. Uh, you know, a bit more fragrant. It's almost, for me, it's more like a lifestyle yeah. choice rather than a diet. Diet, that word should be banned. Yeah. It's not about that. It's making a few little changes and maybe reapproaching things in a slightly different way yeah. so that you, you know, you're still getting that amazing food that's yeah. good for you. Raw ingredients, pulled together, great combinations, yeah. deliver beautiful dishes. Yeah. Healthy um, food but still sexy. Yeah, yeah, fine. Healthy and sexy. Couldn't put it any more simply black. Like. Yeah. Right. Red wine vinegar. Okay. <coughs> yep. This will give us a nice little bit of a tang. Okay. So when you buy it, it's got this big lid here. Put your thumb over the top and just a tiny drip. Yeah. You don't want loads, otherwise it'd be really, really heavy. Okay. A little bit of oil. This is a rapeseed oil, but you can use olive oil as well. Okay. That's fine. A little bit, not too much. And then I've got a little bit of honey. I like using honey yeah. rather than sugar. A drip, tiny little drip. You don't want this, you know, you don't want it too sweet, yeah? Mm -hmm. I've done those three, can you do the others? Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna get that in the oven. That's it, yeah. And this will take the average, you know, supermarket tomato to a new level. I can tell the flavor. They just look amazing, don't I mean, they look beautiful, it you know, the shine, yeah. the light is shining on the tomatoes, there's yeah. little flecks of herb, salt, pepper. You know, you could roast those yeah. and mix them in a pan with some fresh pasta and a little bit of parmesan, you'd have a beautiful dish. You know, so do twice as many. That's, that's so tomorrow night, yeah. you could have that. That's no but idea. today we're having Kiev. Yeah, yeah. Right, into the oven. Okay. 15 minutes. 180? 15 minutes, 180. Yeah. Right, I'm going to show you a little trick to make roasted garlic, it's absolutely amazing. Mm. I've got some in the oven already ready for us, but this is how I do it, okay? Whole bulb of garlic. I like to buy maybe six or seven bulbs at a time. Buy them all, because they're keeping the fridge for ages. 
but take half of them and do this, okay? So, a little bit of oil straight over the top there, okay? And then if you pop that into that fire oven on there and take the one out that I've roasted, that'll sit in the oven at about 160 degrees yeah. for an hour. And what it'll do is it'll just roast inside its own skin. So there's nowhere for the flavour to go. The technical term is a confit. Yeah, that smells amazing. Basically. Is that all there is to the, the inside of the chicken kiev? Just that? No, not yet. All right. All well, sort it, of smells like, it smells like the inside of the kiev. Yeah. So, you know, what we've got is this amazing yeah. sweet garlic yeah. now. So what we're going to do is, if you cut the core off the garlic, now smell it. Oh, wow. Yeah? yeah? You can't buy that. You can only make it. Yeah. And how easy is it to make? So, squeeze the garlic out, okay? So do you want to do the same with that one? We'll do. Cut the core off the bottom, and then imagine it's toothpaste, and just squeeze it out. Just give it a squeeze. Look at that! Oh, okay. Amazing. Easy, isn't it? And how long do you cook these for? Um, these are about an hour at 160, right. and they just cook inside the skins. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So look, if I just spread that, what you've got now is an amazing, absolutely amazing paste. Okay? That's like your lazy garlic for you that yeah. I know you love so much. Yeah. Okay, so Kiev ha has a bit of raw garlic in there as well, okay? So if I just squash that, you don't want too much. I like to put both types of garlic in, so you get a nice kind of, you know sometimes with garlic you get a little bit of warmth about mm -hmm. garlic, you know, when it's strong. Okay? So we want both. So, pop that into there. And then I've got a collection of herbs here. So I've got rosemary. Yeah. We've got thyme. And all we're going to do is just strip the thyme off. I'll get some more here. You also teach how to chop like a pro on your cookery school lesson, don't you? Everybody wants to know how to chop like chef's chop. Um, and it's, it's confidence, it's practice, and it's the right tools for the right job. These are the knives that I use in my kitchen yeah. downstairs. You know, all my working days in the kitchen, I use these knives. Yeah. So when I came to set up the cookery school, I wanted to be able to get you the same knives. And these are knives that you can buy. Mm. You know, they're not special industrial knives. These are just good domestic knives. You, you only ever cut yourself with a blunt blade. Because of the control. It sounds daft, the sharper the knife, the safer it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's only because you've got complete control and it glides straight through. Yeah. So I've got some, some basil, some rosemary, and some thyme here. And we're just gonna run that throughout. And we've now got a lovely, fresh combination of herbs. You just smell those now. Just amazing, isn't it? It's such a beautiful. Awful. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. It's just fragrant. Yeah. So, a little bit of oil. We're not using butter, like you usually use yeah. with a Kiev. Yeah. We're going to stay clear of that. And then just a little squeeze of lemon juice to counterbalance, okay? Yeah. Squeeze. Right, do you want to add those herbs into there? Yes, Chef. Now, my little thing. I'm a little bit obsessed with capers at the moment. Capers, right. capers. Well, what exactly are okay? capers? they're like a little berry. And they just come out of a jar, you know, they're just a jar. But they have a lovely tang to it. And that is quite rich, because we've got oil in there and we've got roasted garlic. So, to give a bit of balance, we've added a touch of lemon juice. Yeah. And some chopped capers, not too many. That'll be enough. We give that a good mix. Get all that in there, don't be shy. Give it a good mix. Because I, like I, like, I like to sniff at different stages to cook, you know, smell what I'm cooking. Yeah. And that's one of the, uh, the pleasures. Bit of a downfall when you're six foot three, is it? <laughs> it's a little bit. You're a long way, aren't you, for that's the chopping board? Way. But yeah, that smells amazing. Yeah. So that, once you've got that, keep it in the fridge. Yeah. Make three times as much as you need. Freeze it into little pots. You know, stir it through a bit of fresh. If you get home at late at night, stuck on the M6, stuck on the ring round around Carlisle, you know, whatever it might be, and you've got like 10 minutes, 
Pasta takes nine minutes to cook. That, all you need to do is stir that through and it will be the most amazing pasta dish you've had. You know, you could just spread that on a bit of bread and just sit and eat So how long will that stay fresh for then? That, that'll keep in the fridge, I would have thought, for probably a week. Yeah. No problem. Brilliant. But then you could also freeze it as well. So, you know, on rainy dark days, on a Sunday afternoon when the, the kids are sat watching a Disney movie, yeah. you could just knock some of that up and then the rest of the week becomes lots easier. Let it go, let it go. You only saw it for the first time this week. Saw it for the first time. Do you know yeah. what? I've actually never seen it, but all oh. I know, every time I hear that, you just think, frozen. Yeah. It's frozen. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a kid's favourite, isn't it? Right, so I've got three chicken breasts here. Okay. okay. So we get a knife. I've got them on the board ready, okay? And again, you, what we're going to do is we're going to slice the top yeah. to let flavour right into the centre. Because usually with a Kiev, it's in the middle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All the garlic butter and everything. So, score the chicken. So we put it on top. Yeah, you see. Right. Okay. So, cross one way. Yeah. Hang on. Cross the other way. So what we've got is like a little checkerboard. Almost. How would you put it in the right. middle if you wanted to? Um, what I would do is I would put my mixture into a piping bag and I would take a sharp knife and I'd push the knife into the chicken breast yeah. and cut that way, take my knife out, turn it round, yeah. put it in the other way and cut it a little bit. Okay. I would pipe it in with a yeah. disposable bag because then you can throw it away because it's yeah. touched chicken and things like that. You're keen, aren't you? I am. Okay, so what we're going to do, just a tiny little bit of seasoning. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of salt and pepper is no bad thing. Okay, so we've got flavour straight away. Yeah. If you'd have put the seasoning on last, you're only going to get flavour on the outside. We've now got flavour in the middle. Yeah. Okay, so, all I want is, I'll do one. <laughs> so, spoon on. There we go. We're going to use all this, so we're all right. So, spread it on, like that, okay? And then I've got these breadcrumbs here. I don't need to flour an egg or anything like that. All I'm going to do is just sprinkle these breadcrumbs Chef, on the top. Chef, may I turn it on? Go yeah. for it. Okay. So these are just simple dried breadcrumbs. Okay. And it all on. I suppose doing it this way is actually more tasty than just having the thing in the middle, isn't it? I think so. Probably is. This is it a really nice way to do it? It's not the true chicken Kiev. It's got all the elements of a Kiev without the butter, yeah. without deep frying it. Okay. You know, and these are the little changes that we're talking about to try and help people with the pound for pound challenge. You know, it can be quite daunting. Ten pounds, quite a lot to lose, isn't it? Of but it is. Make a few changes, go out more, maybe, you know, walk, don't use lifts, you know, don't use escalators, <laughs> things like that. You'd be amazed the difference it makes though, wouldn't yeah. it? And that's my plan. Yeah. Okay, now, a little bit of rapeseed oil, just drizzle a little bit on the top. Go for you. This is the big finale. This is your showbiz drizzle. Okay, All right. showbiz drizzle. Go for it. Make it count. Sit, all of them. How's That'll that? do. Perfect. Right. Into the oven. I know you love my ovens. I do. Into the oven. 180 degrees almost, for about almost, 18 minutes. I almost broke it before when I was testing it. Which one is it, Peter? Left or right? 100, which, which one's on 180? Here we go. Watch this. One finger. Look at that. Straight oh, in. I forgot the tomatoes were in there. Yeah. Um, 18 so minutes. Middle shelf, 18 minutes. Yeah. The tomatoes. Smelling amazing. That's it, we just wait for dinner now. Chicken Kiev's cooked. Go do your favourite thing with the oven. Uh, and let's see what we've got, yeah? There you go. Okay. Tomatoes first, do you want? Uh, I'm easy, whichever you prefer. Okay. 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 Right, so we've got the chicken breast. Yeah. 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 Oh, they look good. Nice. What do you think? I think it's all about the taste, Jeff. All look, right. Proof in the pudding. Okay. So these tomatoes, look. If I just 
squeeze a little bit of that out and I'll show you why in a minute, okay? So let's let's do this one, okay? These are a little bit smaller, so we'll put three on that one, yeah? Right. We're going for an RT presentation here, are we? No, we're just going to bung it on. We're going to bung it on. Okay, let me just... Deep fried chips. <laughs> Unlucky pal now. Okay, so, a few fresh herbs. Yep. Yeah. Especially this time of year, anything fresh for me is a bonus. Because it is, you know, I just think it's what everyone's craving, you know, at this time of year. And it just gives incredible flavour. So, little... Yeah? We've almost got a restaurant this year. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, do you remember when we added a touch of vinegar to our tomatoes? I do, yeah. yeah I do. So we've got a load of sauce, a little load of oil there. If I just add a splash there. All we've got is a load of flavour on there. Yeah? So all we've got is roasted tomato juices. Yeah? You this don't is want to waste. You to get yourself on the cooking school to learn all these little tips. Peter's um, demonstrations are full of little tips like this. It is. It, it's nothing that isn't achievable. Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, if you put that down in front of your loved one, you're going to be a popular boy. Yeah. Yes? Okay, so, as you said, proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding there. Have a taste, say. see what you think. This is the first chicken kebab I've ever tasted, like I said earlier, that hasn't been... Go bought, right in the middle. Hasn't been bought from the supermarket. Yeah. From the frozen uh, section. Here we go. I mean, it smells. Should I get a bit of tomato in Yeah, there? get a bit of tomato. Get the whole experience. What's the herb again? It's just a little bit of fresh basil. Basil. Very hot. It smells amazing. It's too hot to eat. Is it? Take that bit out, obviously. <laughs> it is too hot to eat. It's bloody fucking boiling. Sorry, I believe it. We'll wait. Okay. You gotta get the money shot. You might as well get it right. Yeah. going to savour every... You know, in a word, I can describe that in one word. Heavenly. Good. That is... It's a good word. Heavenly. That is incredible. I can't believe the difference. And again, as I've said throughout all the videos we're doing, I can't believe it's so tasty and yet it's really healthy. This is seriously amazing. Mm. I think with the food that we've cooked here, you know, the weight's not going to drop off like that, but it's going to help you. Mm. You know, you're going to have to put a bit in as well. You know, you're going to have to do some exercise, make some choices. Walk, walk to the shop. Don't drive. Do you know what I mean? Get in a lift. Mm. Don't do that. Take the stairs. That'll help. You know, swimming with the kids every every weekend. So all these things, little bits, fused with a bit of thought behind your food. Follow some of these recipes. It doesn't have to be to absolutely to the letter. Yeah. But you know, if you haven't got one ingredient, don't let that be a reason not to do it. Do you know what I mean? Just take it as a bit of a guideline. Mm. Like I said to you, you know, these roasted tomatoes, make twice as many and then tomorrow night just chop them up through fresh pasta. This is easy. This is amazing. It Good. really is. Why do you like it? All these recipes are not difficult to do. Mm. Yeah? If you can do them, they can do them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is delicious though. Good. Are you capers there? Like your capers there? Eh? Mm. I converted you. To find out how to make this recipe and more, book yourself onto a cookery course at the Simply Good Cookery School. It's Peter Sidwell's Cookery School here in Penrith at Regat.